Hello, you wonderful people, more talking head videos because that's what you wanted to see, right? Right? Am I right? No, but all seriousness, today we're going to talk about getting hired as a software engineer, web development in 2023 and beyond. Now, before we continue with this video, what I want you to do is watch this first, of course, but then check out this other video by Theo because he made a lot of points. And what I'm going to do is use a chart that he has come up with, and I'll tell you how that has been my experience and share with you my strategy of what has been working for me when looking to get hired. And a lot of you are going to say it's not fair, but it's the truth. So without any ado, let's get to the video. I'll make sure to put a link to Theo's channel specifically to this video so you could watch it right afterwards. But if you look at the chart, what he's here saying that prior to pre-2022, everything that you see on the green where you're able to send called resumes, talk with recruiters, etc., you were able to get jobs much easier because there's more opportunity. And Another part of it is to go through referrals or team transfers, which we'll talk in a little bit. But now, if you take a look here, that section of sending cold resumes and trying to get hired by just spamming companies with your resumes and going to interviews and seeing if you're going to get hired is much harder to do. And there's many reasons why. And he does a great job outlining what the reasons were. And he gives some feedback on what you can do today to be able to increase your chances by doing open source contribution, communities, and having impact. And I'm going to talk about this diagram using the lens of my experience and how throughout from the time that I started to where I am today, I never had to send hundreds and hundreds of resumes. And I'll tell you why. And a lot of you are going to say this is not fair, but this is number one skill that you should have that will allow you to be able to get hired in 2023 and beyond. Now, before getting into the video, I want to share with you my story. It was really hard for me to get hired. I started learning to code at an early age of 35 years old, 36 years old, seriously, and I got my first job at 39. So it took me a minute, took me three and a half years to go from learning to code to getting hired. And the way I got hired is very important for you to know, and I'm being honest with you. I'm going to tell you the whole history of my employment in the web development industry and how I got to where I am today. And the reason why I'm telling you is to put and shine the light on the importance of knowing people and networking. And then we're going to come back to the chart that Theo demonstrated to kind of sum everything together. My first job was getting an internship as a WordPress developer. I didn't even develop much WordPress. It was mostly doing minor tweaks using HTML and CSS, sometimes some JavaScript, and maybe once in a while some uh, PHP. How did I get that position? I got that position because at the time I used to have my own business. I used to run a martial arts school. And for that martial arts school and for various programs that I had there, I had set up my own WordPress websites. And one of the students at my school, she owned a marketing agency and they were looking for developers. And I overheard her in a conversation and I said, hey, this is really cool. I've been looking for fun to build websites. I've been exploring WordPress and stuff like that. And I was wondering if you have an opening. And she said to me, I don't have an opening, but what I do have is you could do an internship and we could go from there. That internship ending up going into a contract role and I ended up working there. After that contract role, I got finally my first job working as a React developer. How did I get that job? Well, at the time I was living in Connecticut, a couple of my friends, Jeff and Steph, they convinced me to move to Texas because they said, hey, you're looking to switch careers into development because I was kind of tired of getting hurt from my previous career. And so they convinced me, move to Texas. There's a lot more opportunity. And when you move down here, we, Jeff and I, we're going to try to connect you with people to help you get hired. And so Steph at the time was working at a company where they were building medical HR product and they needed a React developer. I, at the time, was learning React. I felt kind of comfortable with React as I, at least that's how I thought at the time. And she talked to her boss and her boss said, yeah, you know what? Bring Paul in. Let's see what he's got. So I went to the interview. I interviewed and the next week I got hired. I worked at the company for a year and a half. And then afterwards, I switched to another role, working for a financial company, building a front end for a loan management uh, system. How did I get that job? Well, I became a developer. I had two friends, David and Jeff. Jeff was an excellent React developer and David just happened to own his own company. At the time that I knew him, 
he, he was doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with me and we were just friends. And David asked me if I knew anybody that did React because at the time I was playing with WordPress. I didn't know enough about it. And I was definitely not the right person for the job, not at all. But I said, hey, I have this friend, Jeff, let me hook you up with him. And David and Jeff got connected and David ended up uh, hiring Jeff and Jeff continued working there for like the next three, four years or so. And in that time, I continued learning to code. I continued to become better at React. I now have one and a half experience working at this other company and eventually David reached out to me and he's like, hey, I was talking to Jeff and Jeff was telling me that, you know, you've been now been working on this company for a year and a half. You have some experience and we need an extra person to help us build out the front end for our product. Would you be interested? And so through that previous connection, I was able to get into the door and start working at this company. While working there for a year, I was really in love with Strappy. I was always talking about Strappy on my YouTube channel. I was always building projects with Strappy. I built a relationship with John Smilk, who runs Coding Addict, and we started doing podcasts together. Short story long, I guess. And John would always make fun of me. He's like, Paul, you always talk about Strappy. You always talk about Strappy. You just never shut up about Strappy. And as a surprise to me, he invited one of the developer advocates from Strappy, Daniel, to come on the podcast. And during that podcast, I talked to Daniel. I talked about my love for Strappy. And I talked to him about like the product, how excited I was. And then as a joke, I said, hey, are you guys hiring at Strappy? And if you are, I'm going to send my resume and I'm going to send, I'm going to use your name as a referral, Daniel. And Daniel kind of was like, yeah, you know what? Go ahead and do it. And I ended up sending my resume using Daniel as a referral and I ended up getting the job. Now, I know I'm telling you this whole story and you're like thinking, why? Any of those positions, I've never had to send out a lot of resumes. And I know if I did, I would have a really hard time getting hired because it is very difficult then and it's even more difficult now. So the reason that I say this to you is because I don't want to be dishonest with you. I want to tell you exactly what my process has been and why networking, building relationships and connecting with people is very, very important. And with that being said, let's come back to the chart that Theo has and kind of let me talk about my experience in relative to that chart and also things that I recommend you do moving forward now. So looking at Theo's chart prior to 2022, this recruiting called appointments, sending your resumes, etc. This is something that I was not part of because I ended up going the referral route, right? And as you could see, prior to 22, I would have had a pretty good chance if I didn't do referrals and I would have just did cold application. But unfortunately, looking at the landscape today, this opportunity with called resume sending, you know, going to those traditional interviews, it is very, very hard. And please go watch Theo's video. He'll tell you more about why this is, but the general idea here is that a lot of people that got laid off who have excellent experience, they have friends in the industry and they're going to be either team transfers from the same company to a different team, or they're going to eat up a lot of that referral because there's plenty of people that are able to get the jobs because they're qualified where you just starting out, you might never make it in front of those hiring managers because you're not getting the referrals. So what's the solution for that? So Theo outlines a couple of things, and then I'll tell you what I've been doing. And you could, if you followed me, you know that this is what I do. I don't just talk about it. But he talks about finding an open source company and starting to contribute to it. One great example for me is I work at Strappy. Now, prior to working at Strappy, I never thought of this being as a strategy because it's just never in my mind. But seeing our community, seeing all the people that contribute to open source, seeing how they engage with our developers, there's a conversation to be had. And we literally had people from our company, from Strappy, reaching out to the community of people that have contributed to our code base or our community and actually giving them an opportunity to get hired. There's many people at our company that got hired, not from the fact of sending bajillion resumes here, but actually going the referral route. So by participating in a community, you're able to start increasing your circle and your reach of people that could trust you and people that could refer you. So open source projects are very important. Another thing that Theo points out is being part of communities. Any communities that you can be, very cool. Like I recently been really loving Remix and I've been engaging with the Remix community. I've been building projects with Remix. I've even had opportunity to go and do talks at my local Remix meetups. 
And I also participated as one of the MCs of the Remix Conf. And those opportunities did not come from because I randomly sent out resumes, but because I contributed, I participated in the community, I built relationships. For instance, the organizer of the local meetup here that I go to Remix, Brooks, he was the one who was like, hey, Paul, come and give me a talk, give us a talk. I gave a bunch of talks like, you know, Paul, I think you'll be cool if you did MC the next uh, Remix uh, Conf in, in Europe. And I didn't travel to Europe. We did it over the internet. But I got that opportunity because of that, because I gave value to the community and he referred me to be able to get the position to MCs. And so what I'm saying here is that your goal is to focus on how you can provide value and do it visibly. So this idea of coding in public, building things, engaging with a community, like Theo says, putting out impact is the way to go because the days of blindly sending your resumes the way they were prior to 2022, they unfortunately are gone. So if you're looking to get hired, I'm not saying that you can't, but it will take a little bit more effort and you will have to really focus on the networking and focus on building relationships. Damn, I talk way too much. But in summary, I'm going to give you some actionable steps that you could take today to help you make sure that you're on the right path to building that network and that community where you are able to take advantage of referrals rather than blindly sending out your resume. Number one, whatever you're building, whatever you're doing, be open on Twitter, be open on LinkedIn and share your learning journey. You will be surprised how you will make friends and grow your community. One of the reasons I started doing the YouTube channel is to build a community, build a friendship. And I had interviews that I literally got from people that I met on YouTube. Maybe some of you know, probably know uh, Web Dev Junkie or Web Dev Cody now. I met him through my engagement on YouTube and I actually had him refer me to his company for a job opportunity. It was working with Angular. I did not take it because I had no interest of working with Angular at the time. Not saying that I would have gotten the job, but that opportunity came because of that. So make sure you're publicly talking about what you're building and sharing. So if you're building something with React, share your project with React, talk about something cool you learned, and tag React on Twitter. Another thing you could do, there's plenty... This is something, again, I didn't really take part of, but there's a lot of hackathons that you can participate. The beauty of hackathons, it forces you to test your coding skills, doing something fun, but also you're going to build relationships that down the road could lead to those referrals, especially over time. Now, the most important thing when you're doing all these things, reaching out to the community, you have to deal with a genuine feeling of providing value and giving care, not just showing up just to take and use somebody for their opportunity. So you do have to bring value. The third thing, you should always be going to meetups, local, online, building friends, building connections. A lot of meetups that I attend to and my favorite one that I've been going here in Austin is Remix Austin. After each meetup, the organizer asks if anybody in the room is hiring from their company and he'll say, our company is hiring. If you're interested, send us your resume let us know. And that's a great way to build a relationship. And a lot of times, if you might not get hired from that relationship, they might help you and be like, hey, this is what you need to improve. This is what you need to do. And they're really there to help you. So take advantage of meetups and the community. Get out there. Again, because this is about building friends, building relationship, take into account your soft skills. You want to make sure that you of course, a lot of people won't believe me when I say that I used to be very shy and I couldn't publicly speak like I do now. It took many, many years of practice and working. But regardless of that, regardless how you feel about it, you have to step out of your comfort zone and you have to get out there, talk to people, make relationship because the next person you meet might be that opportunity that may refer you to your next position. And most importantly, the last thing, nothing in life is easy. I don't have to tell you that. You all know the struggle. So you have to have persistence. The only reason that I'm still on this YouTube channel, the only reason that I have my job as a developer is because I never took no as an answer and I never quit. If I quit, let's say six months ago, a year ago, you would have never heard my story. You've never been looking at my stupid face right now telling you this story because I quit, right? And so as long as you don't quit, you're in the game, you're going to get there. A lot of people will try to discourage you, tell you how it's hard. And a lot of times life is just going to be discouraging and really, really hard. And you're going to feel like quitting. And I'll tell you, yes, of course, sometimes it's easier to quit, but stay strong, stay persistent. You can do it. So anyway, I know this video is like a bajillion minutes long. And if you made it this far, oh my God, Jesus Christ, thank you. 
I bless you. You are amazing. You're amazing anyway, regardless of what I say. But thank you for watching. If you haven't smashed the like button, you don't have to. But if you want to, go ahead. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, subscribe. I also have a community that I'm going to start advertising more and more and more. So keep an eye posted. I'll put something in the community tab that you could check out. So if you're not subscribed, go subscribe so you could see the news in the community. That being said, I love you so much and have a great night, great day, great evening, wherever you are. Stay strong. You got this. I, I mean, just work hard and, you know, you'll definitely get there. I mean, like, really have like, there's no shortcuts. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's just working hard. Do you think I feel happy, like sitting here, like making some of these videos, like when I'm tired or like, like my cat's making a mess here? Listen, I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, except that there is no free lunch. I'm going to keep this part of the video. I don't know why this is dumb, but here's the thing. There's so many videos online that tell you about shortcuts, tell you about how easy it is to get somewhere. It's all hype. There, there, there is no shortcuts in life. The only shortcut in life is do something every day that bring you closer to your goal. If you have that consistency over time, you'll get there. I don't know why I had to have this heart to heart. This whole video has been heart to heart, but I wanted to say this because I'm sick and tired of all these YouTube channels that tell you how easy it is. It's not. It's hard. It's difficult. But that's the beauty of it. That means that anybody who is willing to put in the effort is going to reap the benefits. With that being said, thanks again for the 30th, fifth time. I'll see you all later. Have a good day.